2 and H1 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Gavin Disa from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Rico. Uh, good day, good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Tata Chemicals Q2 and H1 FY24 earnings conference call. We have with us today Mr. Mukundan, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Vari Langrana, Executive Director, and Mr. Nankumar Tirumalai, Chief Financial Officer. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some statements made in today's discussions may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risks and uncertainty. I now invite Mr. Mukundan to begin proceedings of the call. Over to you, Mukundan. Thanks, Kevin. Good evening and welcome to everyone to our Q2 and H1 FY24 earnings call. Let me start by uh, first wishing all of you uh, 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 greetings for the festive season and happy Deepavali. I'm joined by my colleagues as mentioned by Gavin, Zari Langrana and Nandu. I will start the discussion with key operational highlights across business and geographies, after which our CFO will walk you through the financial performance for the quarter. Overall, among the markets where we have sizable presence, India and US were stable. There was softness in some segments of the market, especially in container glass. Our prices have remained subdued with new supplies coming from China, or at least the new supplies being announced out of China. There has been a bit of a slowdown spillover from China into other markets. Overall, in the medium term, we look, uh, the outlook for soda has remained uh, stable, backed by demand from sustainability sectors like uh, soda, PV, and lithium. As far as our company is concerned, we have maintained our market shares in key markets through our actual customer engagement. Our cash generation was better as with working better working capital. Our focus in uh, some of the markets like in UK will remain that we focus on high value added bicar and pharma salt. And we will continue to focus on operational excellence to ensure our margins are protected. We have uh, repaid a uh, debt of US dollar 120 million in the overseas units in the first half of the year. Our CapEx program uh, will continue as planned for the project, which, is, which are already underway. And the future programs will focus on, focus, continue to focus on deep bottlenecking with a very high capital efficiency. Uh, moving on to Alice, their quarterly performance was better than previous quarter in spite of challenging environment. As compared to corresponding quarter last year, revenue did decline by 12% due to subdued performance of the international market, but domestic market remained stable. EBITDA of quarter was higher by 14%, and Rallis approach to ensure right level of placements reflected in improved collections. To conclude, we believe core fundamentals of our main business, Sodaish, continues to remain steady. We expect medium term su demand supply situation to remain stable. While we are scaling up capacities of our group, the core business by almost a million ton, cost effectively mainly through deep bottlenecking, we remain very much focused on management excellence, debt repayment, and strengthening our cash flows. Our endeavor is to maintain our customer engagements at high level to ensure market position and continue to have steady contribution with focus on excellence. That concludes my opening remarks. I now hand over the floor to Nandu, who will take you through financial performance. Thanks, Mukundan, and good day, everyone. Let me walk you through the financial performance after which we get the Q&A. Starting with the headline numbers for the quarter, our revenue over for the quarter was at uh, 3998 crores, down 6% compared to last year's Q2. Decrease in revenue was driven by lower uh, soda ash volumes and contribution being impacted mainly in India and Kenya. EBITDA for the quarter was 819 crores as against 920 crores in the last year's Q2, 11% lower. CAC for the quarter was 495 crores, lower by 28% uh, compared to last year's Q2, which also has a 102 crores of exceptional gain booked in the quarter on account of a reversal of provision on, on account of a long pending entry tax issue we had when we were the government. Moving to each business, with, starting with India, revenue for the quarter was 106 crores. 
Solar volumes were up 4%, compared last year's Q2. Pricing was lower because of which we had lower revenues compared last year. Salt business performed well and clogged their steady volumes. Bicarb saw good volumes too, as compared last year. Moving to US, uh, business continued to benefit from better pricing during the quarter, a better margin for the 22% for the current quarter. In the UK business, revenue was impacted as compared last year's Q2 with lower volumes, and led by lower uh, uh, revenue of 7% in the current quarter, a beta was 19% for the current quarter. As far as Kenya is concerned, both the volumes and relations were softening, which in turn impacted margins and profits for the quarter. As far as Kidika and Utah is concerned, both the businesses have, work, have a growth map in front of them. With time and investments, we expect both segments to clock in consistent numbers going forward. Moving on to revenues for the quarter was 83 crores, 12% down compared last year's Q2. A beta was 135 crores, 14% higher than last year's Q2. That 81 crores against last year's 71 crores, up 15%. Our cash policy for cash at the council was 1701 crores in, in September. CapEx was 418 crores. Net debt was 4347 crores on account of dividend outflow, CapEx, uh, etc. With that, I close the comments and hand it over back to uh, Gavin to open up for Q&A. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star N1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star N2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Vivek Rajumani from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Um, hi, sir. Um, thank you for the presentation and uh, happy Diwali to you and the team. Uh, two questions from my side. Uh, could you just talk a bit about the U.S.? Uh, volumes uh, have not recovered back to the normal levels uh, this quarter, and it also appears that the pricing for exports, which are more levered to spot, have corrected quite a bit. So could you just give us some color of what's happening there and how we should think about this going forward? And the second question I had was more specifically on China. Uh, could you give us some color on you know what's the demand supply situation in China? Um, I ask this because we, we did see a rally in spot prices in China a couple of months back, and recently we've again seen a very sharp decline. So any color on what's happening on the ground would also be very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. I think let, let me first start with China. I think in China, the, uh, the basic uh, market issue was that there was a new supply coming in from Inner Mongolia. And... Uh, uh, which in, in anticipation of which many customers had uh, delayed uh, uh, purchases and they were hoping that prices would be correct. But unfortunately, or let's say the, those uh, disturbances did not happen in China. It seemed more stable than what uh, the market participants should have uh, thought should happen. Uh, the China inventory uh, actually fell to a very low level from a uh, approximately three lakh tons it had fallen down to something like uh, uh, yeah, 2.7 lakh tons and it is now up a little bit. So really uh, the, the issue in uh, uh, China in our view is that uh, Chinese market has remained pretty range bound uh, and uh, really the spillover in the uh, international markets uh, of volumes have not happened. Uh, that does not mean that it could not happen. We'll keep a close watch on this. And uh, uh, the other angle in China was about the demand uh, situation within China, which has remained uh, slightly soft. A lot of measures by government, and you would be leading this across sectors in the general uh, 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 news too. And uh, it, the real impact of that, we will wait and watch and see. If you look at broad numbers, we think China numbers in terms of volume uh, uh, compared to last year are about 3% up. That is the overall number which we have uh, done the calculation. Uh, but uh, uh, the reality uh, is that we need to keep a close watch on China. So really the news from China is the anticipated uh, uh, disturbance the market did not uh, follow through. Uh, it, was, uh, it, it was more uh, soft than what we had thought it would be. In terms of the... Uh, uh, your question was on the U.S. market volumes, right? 
year. So in terms of US market volumes, I think uh, in terms of domestic market share, I think we have more or less protected our domestic market share overall in the market. I, I, I think the pressure we rightly identified was on the export market, uh, where I think the prices have broadly uh, uh, tended down from the previous quarter. From previous year, the export pricing is more or less the same. But from the previous quarter, they've tended down approximately by $50, $60 per ton. And we anticipate that will be the stable number going forward. So it is back to what it was uh, the previous year, same quarter. So I hope that sort of uh, explains the current market situation, Ramesh. Uh, uh, okay. So we um, Thank you so much, sir. So just one small clarification before I rejoin the queue. Uh, do you expect the volumes in the U.S. to go back to, you know, the 600 kiloton level, or you think this is going to be a more normalized number going forward? Actually, the domestic market in U.S. Uh, is, has been fairly stable, except for some uh, softness in container glass. Uh, and uh, the, the, the real impact in the U.S. has been the export uh, market, uh, where uh, I, I think the the South American market we do expect will remain stable, but I think the big issue we need to watch out for is the Southeast Asian market. So I don't want to make an immediate commentary. We are watchful. Uh, if things turn out benign, then I think it will be back to normal, uh, the volumes we said. Otherwise, it will tend towards what we are having in this quarter. Perfect. Thank you so much, and all the very best. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirmal Bang Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening and thank you very much. So in terms of the Inner Mongolia capacity addition, uh, what is the latest number we have in terms of confirmed capacity addition this year? And uh, will we see the entire 5 million uh, capacity being added in the next uh, two months? So the public news is that the uh, entire 5 million may come on stream this year. This is going to be say this year, that is March, uh, uh, 31st, March 24. But we, we think more realistically, it is likely to be close to about 3 million. 3 million, okay. The second thing is, uh, if you see the India performance, uh, the margins are under pressure. So what is the reason for the weak performance in India? Because the rest of the world, we can understand. Uh, but India, we thought the Hindu segments, uh, including property and automobiles, are doing well. So, how much? Uh, and we last time we told that that there is a certain amount of overhang from increased exports from Turkey and the supply overhang in China. So, uh, how much of that is still persisting in terms of channel stocks and B consumption? And uh, when do you see this recover? So really, uh, the issue in India is not so much the demand. Uh, Ramesh, I think you are you rightly pointed out, India is actually probably the bright star in the demand side. So Indian market, we don't think it is a demand. We don't see it as a demand issue. But certainly, Indian market has suffered from heavy increase in imports. Uh, Indian imports, which were broadly around, let's say, 14 to 14 or 13 or 14 percent of the total sales. That has doubled to close to 27, 28 percent. So the real change has been the imports landing in India, mainly from Turkey, and that has impacted the pricing because they've landed at unreasonable, let's say, pretty low prices, and that has tended to pressure the market prices overall. So we do think this is a phenomenon which uh, is, uh, let's say, very specific uh, for this market, and uh, uh, we do think that over a period of time it will correct itself. Uh, if you ask me, has it reached the bottom? Uh, in my view, uh, we, whether we reach the bottom or not, very clear to me, but we are very close to bottom. If I might squeeze in a last question on UK and Kenya. Kenya margins have really come down sharply. So is this the margin which we can expect going forward or is there some scope for recovery in the Kenya margins? And similarly in UK. I think uh, in Kenya, you, the way we would certainly uh, say that uh, the current margins which are trending would probably be the normal margins going forward because bulk of their exports is, is to India and Southeast Asia, and those numbers more or less would uh, tend to be around the same figure going forward. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, join the team. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor & Co. Please go ahead. Yeah, Namaskar, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. 
sir as earlier alluded by you that uh, uk is, uk will be moving to now the per, per ton profitability structure so current numbers for uk uh, can be penciling in uh, this is now the new normal for uh, the uk numbers or what should be our understanding Certainly, I, I would say bicarb and in salt, uh, these numbers would reflect themselves. In terms of soda ash, while we have tended to maintain constant margin, and that probably will hold true for Q, uh, Q3 of this fiscal year and Q4 of the calendar year, you have to wait for a commentary from us exactly where the margins will settle for us the next uh, contract period next year. So we are still in the process of going through the negotiation. So. I'm not able to sort of comment whether it will remain stable or move around a little bit uh, up or down, but we'll come back to you on that. But bicarb and salt will remain more or less stable. So it is really the soda ash one which we need to sort of uh, manage for the new contracting period starting from Jan to December. And answer for the CO2 program which we have con uh, conducted through with the aid of the UK government, the benefits of the same are now fully accrued and this is going to be uh, pertinent now? Yeah, I think the bicarbonate plant actually completely utilizes the carbon capture uh, unit. In fact, it is uh, it is a zero, really close to net zero kind of a situation for our bicarb production. So it is a green product and it is finding uh, very good customer traction. So as you mentioned rightly that the contracts will be renewable, the annual contracts for uh, in the next month. So the outlook for US also well, uh, you would be able to share post uh, uh, the the Q3 numbers. The, that would give us an, uh, uh, an uh, assumption how the next year is going to shape up. Is that would be a better understanding for U.S. market also, since there is a lot of volatility currently in the soda uh, market. So that will have an impact on our contracts uh, with uh, annual contracts for U.S. also. Correct. I think we'll be able to share with you in Q3. I can only tell you that the teams are working hard to close out all contracting and it is moving in the right direction. Okay, so last point was on the global conference on soda acid that happened in the month of October. If you could uh, enlighten us with uh, what's the global scenario shaping up uh, currently and uh, what's the feedback in terms of uh, the demand outlook globally, uh, if you could give some more color on, on the thing and then I'll join the team, sir. I think one big theme from all customers in that conference was from the focus on sustainability. I think all customers are looking to the carbon reduction program, the big ones, the global ones. I think that that's one of the key themes running. So uh, the uh, chemical companies which are able to demonstrate a move towards a lower carbon footprint would continue to benefit with greater customer traction. To that extent, our units in uh, US, which has a lower carbon footprint, as well as the one in UK, do benefit. Kenya is also very low carbon footprint. Uh, it is in India. We need to address that by, uh, you know, by what we have committed, which is 30% reduction. That's one broad trend right across. The the second uh, trend is there is a uh, continued belief and bullishness about the applications like solar and the lithium carbonate. They're going to continue to be the dri drivers of growth. Uh, the uh, the other traditional sectors. Uh, I think we have to wait for the macroeconomics to correct. So fundamentally, how the real estate market behaves and how the, uh, let's say, the uh, automotive sector behaves, which will drive the flat glass. In terms of container glass, it has been a bit of a surprise for all of us that the market demand has softened. Traditionally, this, this segment has held up. So we have to wait and watch what has led to this, uh, especially in terms of both uh, wine and uh, beer consumption. Uh, Usually should hold up, but uh, it is seeing it's seeing it. it there's, there's been a reduction in the uh, container glass demand, but uh, we don't have a, a clarity on the what the way it will trend. So I think we will want to watch uh, very closely. So these are the broad uh, lessons to glean from the uh, Sorash conference. Uh, certainly, uh, I, I think in terms of uh, supply side, uh, all the companies are focused on. Uh, improving their core offering to customers by reducing carbon. And uh, most companies are also focused on making sure that their uh, cost competitiveness continues to improve more supply. That is what they are focused on. Right, right sir. I'll join the queue. I have two questions. May I ask now or sir, join the queue? No. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. For, sir, for the finance costs, we see that on a consolidated basis, our finance costs have gone up by 100 crore. 
whereas uh, you have also alluded to the fact that we have re reduced our debt on the us uh, uh, unit by 100 million dollars so what's the debt on the us counterpart currently and why have the uh, finance costs gone up actually the borrowing cost is uh, almost uh, the interest rates have uh, increased uh, dramatically uh, they have more than doubled and they want to clarify yeah. so you see we have loans in the uk singapore and us so all of our uk and singapore debt got refinanced about the year back in december last year so those came at a much higher rate than what we took earlier so last year q2 had a earlier rate taken a long time back at 1% uh, like high bond fixed this so, so therefore this rate difference or a 5% on the loans in singapore and uh, uk is reason for the increasing interest rates otherwise we are paying debt and therefore that is uh, that is resulting in a lower increase over last year so broadly it is uh, refinancing done bulky of uh, other uh, interest debt in the uk and singapore last year in december and the total rate will be high so what is the debt on us currently after the repayment um uh, uk uh, us would be you are going to pause Children, just hold on. And the next point would be on sodium bicarbonate use on for flu gas treatment. What kind of incremental demand uh, are we anticipating with this uh, with the implementation of flu gas treatment at the uh, power plant? I think so. Tata Power is also uh, contemplating a uh, lot of initiative on this basis. So, uh, how is this uh, this going to shape up? and uh, the outlook on the thing it's a growing sector and we are very much uh, focused on that sector too so very want to add a uh... yeah i think you're right uh, <clears throat> certainly in india we've seen over the last 12 months increased uh, demand from this sector primarily from one of the uh, uh, pan india players so i like thought of our is also looking at it our estimate is that it will continue to grow at about 10% per annum but in a phased manner as each utility takes up each of the plants separately so it's certainly moved from a pilot phase to a commercial phase as far as the utilities are concerned and on previous question in terms of the debt in us there's 258 billion dollars in us overall 728 is the overall uh, debt we have uh, on the on the whole 258 is us and uh, 150 million pounds is in uk 182 million dollars is in singapore bond that's a breakup right sir thank you sir uh, i i'll join the queue sir thank you and all the best to the team sir and should be public thank you thank you our next question is from the line of mithil from unlistedindia.com please go ahead uh, yes our uh, first question is like for the additional capacity that's going to come on stream uh, do we have uh, the contracts uh, ready for it like Uh, to take away for the new stream yeah i think the first additional stream is going to come as uh, uh, the the salt capacity is coming on stream i think that that the more or less is uh, uh, fully booked with uh, uh, with our contract with our consumer and on the soda ash uh, about 0.25 is uh, 250000 tons coming on stream which we are very confident the indian market with its growth would uh, Take that. I think there is. Uh, we we have uh, a full confidence on that. The additional capacity we are bringing on um, in Magadi about uh, 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 two hundred odd thousand ton, and in uh, US about four hundred odd thousand ton. I think those uh, we are very confident because of the cost competitiveness of both these sites. But they they are they are about two two and a half years away, and uh, the current year the capacity is coming is only in India. So my uh, second question is on the growth front. Like, uh, what is Tata Chemicals planning to have a to be on a very high growth front? Uh, like our sister companies are Tata uh, Power and Tata Motors. So if you see in soda ash and uh, salt, uh, the capacity expansion is also uh, is very moderate. So what is Tata Chemicals planning to you know grow aggressively? Yeah. Yeah. So, in terms of the uh, uh, organic growth, uh, Nitin, uh, our yeah. plans are exactly what I mentioned. That uh, we uh, we will be bringing on about uh, 30 30 percent more capacity in uh, uh, in uh, our silica unit, 300,000 ton, 3,000 ton, and it will further go through doubling of capacity uh, in phase two, for which we are we should start the process of construction in about a month's time. 
after getting the consent to establish from the Tamil Nadu government. As far as uh, the Soraya's is concerned, it will go to a million ton in India and the salt will go to 1.5. Beyond that, the next phase it takes the salt capacity to 1.8 million tons and uh, also the uh, uh, Soraya's capacity to 1.3 million ton in India. That is about two and a half years away. And in US, about 400,000 ton additional, and in uh, Kenya, about 200,000 additional. Those capacities will be also around two and a half years to three years away. So we, 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 we will be adding capacities in a lumpy manner, uh, but uh, they have to go through execution phase, and uh, that's the business. Anything on the inorganic concern? Because these are okay. not very small actually uh, in the overall context of things. That's all. Yeah, we will continue to look for opportunities. If anything subsidized, we'll come back to you. The sector is uh, having interesting opportunities. We are on the lookout for this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirmal Bang Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much again. So if you were to look at the current consumption, what is the current consumption in million tons? And what is the kind of growth you expect in consumption of soda ash over the say, next uh, one to two years? And what is the visible capacity addition you expect in the next one to two years, other than the Inner Mongolia capacity? So, <clears throat> over one to three years, other than Inner Mongolia, we aren't seeing anything substantial on the horizon. Anything substantial that's been talked about has been talked about in the 2027-2028 time frame. So capacity-wise, we don't see too much coming up other than some usual D bottlenecks. Uh, demand side, historic global demand growth rates have been in the region of two and a half, three percent. Today it's much softer. If the traditional sectors go back to their original growth rate, you should see those kind of numbers appearing once again. No, yeah. If you look at yeah, if you look at the glass at like in Asahi glass is reported very weak numbers. So, is there a challenge? Well, while you said that the demand is okay, is there a you know kind of softening of the trend in terms of contain, uh, you know Indian glass sector? Uh, how is the demand trend in India? So, Indian glass sector, I think the demand trend is good. Perhaps the domestic players are. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay connected while we reconnect the management. Thank you. gentlemen we have the management line connected so you can go ahead yeah so uh, Ramesh I was only addressing the uh, I don't know whether you heard what Zari mentioned that uh, in glass the main issue volume growth is continuing there is no issue on that it's mainly the pricing pressure and pricing pressure mainly coming from imports from China and from Malaysia and you know in uh, with, with Malaysia India is a free trade uh, agreement and that does create issues for glass players from time to time Okay, and uh, lastly, can you give us the uh, capex uh, for FI 25 and 26 and 27, since you have lined up all the expansion? Yeah, just, just hold on, we'll just give you the number. Uh, uh, can we go to the next question? We'll get JP the number. Yes. Yeah, I am done with that once I get that. Thank you very much and have a good day all. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. So the first question Why is on... Mr. Nagraj, if we request you to use the answer, please, for audio yeah, quality. Uh, is it better? Yes, sir. Please yeah. go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so the first question is on Turkey. So what is the differential in terms of the imports from Turkey and the local prices? 
and an allied question to that uh, given that china demand is relatively low so are there any exports happening from china thank you so let me let me take your second question first uh china was exporting till about 4 months ago the market then suddenly tightened domestically and chinese exports came down uh at the moment it is not back to the historical levels but as inner mongolia production starts appearing into the market and into the domestic market primarily to start with uh, you might see exports increasing out of china but uh, we have to see how that plays out uh the second question the uh, differential between domestic pricing and turkish import pricing uh would i think vary market to market and customer to customer uh obviously domestic pricing is at a premium to import pricing and we believe that differential will continue to stay right and uh, any specific reasons for uh, high imports coming from turkey i mean are the uh, uh, prices in terms of the energy energy costs etc have come down uh, dramatically and or there is constraint from the economy side and they are just pushing the volume so any thoughts on this yeah i don't think uh, energy costs have come down in fact energy costs may have gone up i think really the large impact may maybe we believe due to the fact that some of the core markets in europe especially southern europe uh has seen a decline in demand and they are finding new home for products now right and just a second question on the uh, us pricing front so in your opening remarks you alluded that uh, on a qq basis the prices have gone down so by about 50 60 dollars so uh, will the uh, prices prevail when it comes to the uh, rene- renewal of contracts uh, in the month of january i think uh, i think the market is still fairly volatile in its and in its state of flux and as mukund mentioned we'll probably get a better idea when we talk again q3 as to you know where the prices might settle but uh, as he also mentioned i think the team is today focused on making sure that all of the contracting is closed as soon as possible right and uh, if i can squeeze in one last one uh, in terms of uh, all the uh, different uh, geographies Uh, which are the uh, segments which are doing well and which are the segments which are uh, lagging behind so i think across the board uh, sustainability driven segments like lithium solar glass are doing well and are continuing to grow in fact growing in double digits uh, within the more traditional segments i think the one that's been impacted is certainly cloud glass primarily due to uh slow housing and residential starts and construction activity in most of the geographies and as mukund mentioned there's been some recent softening in container glass demand but that we believe might might bounce back perhaps faster than what we see in the float glass segment sure sir uh, thanks for answering all the questions and best of luck and uh, diwali wishes to the entire team thank you thank you on the capex uh, broadly just to address the question which was there uh, beyond the current cycle where what we mentioned the expansion of salt from 1.5 to 1.8 broadly we expect that number is about 400 odd crores the sorash number in india from 1 to 1.3 is about 1000 odd crores and uh, the kenya and us put together uh, which is uh, broadly our uh, point uh, Uh, six expansion uh, million tons will be about 200 broadly 200 million uh, dollars so you could take all put together about 3000 odd crores spread over spread over next three years for the expansion beyond the current cycle thank you our next question is from the line of sakit kapoor from kapoor and co please go ahead sir sir when as you mentioned uh, that our contracts uh, we are working with the contract for the next year for both uk and the us market so taking into account the current average prices which are prevailing the spot prices and our contracted value for last year wh- what's the current differential between the two and uh, what can we read uh, from, from this data 
See, in terms of the data, as Gary has explained, I think the domestic contracting in US and in U uh, US uh, and UK, uh, I think it's more or less, I think, should uh, be stable. That is what our conditions tell us. In terms of exports, there is a bit of volatility which Gary has explained, and the volatility is fairly uh, more acute in Southeast Asia than in uh, South America. And on that, the contracts are still getting uh, closed and, and getting closed underway. And uh, uh, we do uh, know that uh, some of the low end prices we've seen may not prevail in the market for, for these contracts. But where they will settle, we'll be in a better position to highlight to all of you in the next quarter. And then we come back for the results. In Indian operations, we are seeing there's this decline in margins uh, and we are trending lower. So is is this attributed mainly to due to the this unabating imports and the lower realization only or or why are the margins trending lower for Indian operations now? Yeah, the main issue in India is not demand. The main issue is the high level of imports of low priced material, which hopefully will update and reduce uh, going forward. But I think we've seen. Uh, uh, major increase in imports and as I said the share of imports has jumped from broadly 14% to 28% over the last four quarters and uh, and that too happening at a fairly uh, very low price and that has depressed the local market conditions uh, and uh, we will have to wait and watch whether this will continue or we will uh, uh, claw back some of these changes. And sir, uh, do you have the import data for the month of October? Mane, this uh, this uh, trend is continued uh, for the previous month also? No, October month it has reduced. Actually, it has come down by more than half. Uh, but you have to watch the trend uh, uh, really going forward, whether this trend will continue or not. So it does come down, which is why we said it is trending down. But if for a couple of more months the same trend continues, then we can say there is a the pressure would have eased up. So it, it so, probably is closer to 14% uh, as we speak in October. Okay. And on the realization front, sir, uh, how are the uh, price trends uh, currently month on month uh, for the spot market? I think spot market is no change. I think the uh, spot market is continuing at the same uh, level. I think if there's any change, you will uh, hear that uh, through uh, the circulars we send out to our customers. Right. Right. Right, sir. And lastly, on the solar demand part, sir, you were you were alluding to some facts about the demand from solar and the lithium. So, taking into account the the solar manufacturing, the pipeline, the uh, for the pipe, the investment in uh, investment pipeline in the solar segment, what what is the anticipated demand, especially from solar for domestically and also globally? Globally, if if you could give some color on the thing. So I think if you look at while the segment is still small in India, it has seen 60% growth. And there are more investments lined up. As they come, obviously, they will uh, they, they will need the solar ash. And uh, I'd, uh, broadly, I would say that we expect at least half a million ton of additional demand coming through that segment over a period of time. But these are early days. As of now, this is, this is within India is one of the fastest growing sectors. Correct, sir. And sir, your outlook on this, our silica and other segment uh, currently, and what's the how would that segment shape up uh, for the next half? We are very uh, confident about silica. We are fully booked out. Uh, we we are expanding. I think the market needs uh, so we will be expanding, bringing on 3,000 ton additional quickly, and then uh, that the simple debottlenecking. The next phase of addition of doubling the capacity will take 18 months. But we are doing everything we can to speed that up because market demand is good. Correct, sir. Thank you, sir, for uh, answering and all that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question of our question and answer session. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing ah. comments. Thank you, everyone. As, as we mentioned, that uh, the market conditions, while they look challenging at the beginning of the quarter, there are some positive signals, but this is too early to comment about it. And uh, we do expect the medium-term outlook for this business, the Soda business, to be stable. 
uh, our business uh, businesses in salt and uh, bicarb are continuing to trend up. Uh, the, uh, the the new business in silica is shaping up well, and uh, also Rallis performance is back on a bend in the positive direction. With this, we remain positive about the strategic direction we set ourselves, which is to focus on core and ensure that we have uh, very capital efficient expansions uh, going ahead and continue to grow the business along with the market growth. With this, uh, I want to thank all of you and wish you all a very happy Deepavali and see you next quarter. Thank you. On behalf of Tata Chemicals Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.